Well, a warm welcome to today's talk, Wednesday the 13th of March. I'm going to share with you some pretty important vitamin D research data from Italy now, and you can decide if you want to watch. Now, vitamin D supplementation, according to these researchers, has a protective effect against the instance of COVID-19 in randomised controlled trial studies. But of course, COVID is just another viral infection. So we would expect this to be effective against all invading viral infections because it's optimising the immune system. We would effect, expect this to be effective against all bacterial infections because it's optimising the immune system. So, But COVID is an interesting example and it's where the data is, so we'll stick with it. Um, now, the figures here, the odds ratio is uh, 0.403 and that means it's about a 60% protective effect, so 60% less likely to actually get the infection for people that have got good levels of vitamin D as opposed to low levels of vitamin D. So quite uh, impressive really. And in the randomised controlled trials performed on healthcare workers, the overall reduction in risk in the population supplemented with vitamin D was approximately 80%. So about an 80% protection in healthcare workers. And these ones are particularly relevant because these were well-conducted clinical trials. So this is pretty convincing data. So why wouldn't you want to reduce your chances of getting a viral or bacterial infection by 80%? Why, why, why wouldn't you? It's, uh, it's pretty obvious, really. Moving on, against the instance of COVID-19 uh, in analytical studies, so they were randomised control studies. In analytical studies, uh, well, it, well, it's odd ratio 0 0.592. So that's what, a bit more than a 40% protective effect. So still pretty good. But the randomised controlled trial data was, of course, the one most likely to be accurate. Now, against the incidence of COVID-19 uh, in intensive care admissions, uh, well, look at that. Odds ratio is 0 0.317. That's getting on for a 70% protective effect. So we've got these protective effects against getting COVID, the instance of COVID. Now, these people might still be getting it, of course, but they're not testing and get, because they're probably not getting symptomatic. They've probably got very minor infections and they weren't testing. Um, that's the analytical studies, and that is the reduced incidence to intensive care, nearly 70%. So that's what this is about if you want to stay. Now, our meta-analysis, this is their conclusion, our meta-analysis suggests a definitive and significant association between the protective role of vitamin D and COVID-19 incidents and ICU uh, admissions. So this is really quite a convincing study from Italy. Now, let's look at some of the details. This is the title of the study here. Preventative vitamin D supplementation and the risk for COVID-19 infection, a systematic review and meta-analysis. It's published in the peer-reviewed journal Nutrients. That's the, um, that's the paper there, available in PDF. Do download it for yourself or freely available, which of course is very generous of the journal. Published uh, in February, 28th February 2024. Now, the authors say this, vitamin D, crucial roles. Bone homeostasis, well, we know about that, strong bones, because it, deficiency causes rickets. Muscle function, oncogenesis. This is the formation of cancers. Now, good levels of vitamin D are protective, we believe, in, from our conversations with Professor Angus Dalglish, arrange probably a whole against a whole range of cancers just by optimizing vitamin D levels. And this makes sense because by optimizing vitamin D levels, you're optimizing the immune system. And if you optimize the immune system, you optimize immune surveillance and that can spot cancers at an early stage and hopefully eradicate the vast majority of them or certainly what an awful lot of them. So oncogenesis, immune response and metabolism, important. Now in the context of COVID-19, uh, numerous researchers have tried to determine the role of vitamin D in the immune response to the virus. Systematic reviews and meta-analysis in this case. Now, the, did, the, the day they actually did this data, they collected this data, was the 15th of May 2023. So, obviously, it takes a while to put together a, a complicated paper like this, but that was like the cut-off point for the data. So, it's, 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 fa it's fairly up-to-date data. Um, preventative vitamin D supplementation, they found 16 good publications on that, 1.26 million people. I mean, the, this is just a huge amount of data that's gone into this. One, one, what did I say? 1.26 million people. 
a huge number of participants. A protective role in the incidence of COVID-19, as we've said. Um, mortality, the paper really can't give firm data on that. We need more studies on that. But admission to intensive care units, for sure. They calculated the odds ratio. The assessment of potential bias uh, and the evaluation of study quality will be conducted by independent researchers. Now, if you read through the paper, they give all the details of how this was done and, and very a very thorough piece of work it is, giving rise to fairly conclusive, as, as they've said, significant and, and basically conclusive conclusions. Given that we know this now, and I think, OK, we, we can't say we know it because we haven't had expensive randomised double blind controlled trials. Firstly, because no one wants to pay for them. And secondly, of course, it will be unethical to artificially reduce people's vitamin D levels and expose them to infections because we've reason to believe quite a lot of them would probably die. So this is, this is good combined data that we've got here. And I'm clearly convinced by it, as you, as you can tell, partly because it's so consistent with all the other data we've been looking at. In fact, quite a few of the papers in here we have previously looked at on this channel. And of course, we've talked to many of the people that have done the original research. Now, just some extra information here that adds to the veracity of this, really. The majority um, of the effects of vitamin D are mediated by VDR, vitamin D receptors. So you, you know this, uh, what's happening now, you've got the vitamin D, it fits into a receptor. The combination of the vitamin D and the receptor trot off and does something. It triggers what we call a secondary messenger system. And in the activation of vitamin D, that's very often the activation of genes. And of course, a lot of those genes are in cells <coughs> that are important, like uh, cells in the immune system. So it makes scientific sense, which is always reassuring. So the, the, the vitamin D are mediated by the vitamin D receptors, which promotes the expression of genes containing specific DNA sequences in the uh, expressed in almost all nucleated cells. So the vitamin D receptor is in virtually all nucleated cells. And of course, that's basically all cells in the body apart from the red blood cells. And certainly all the white blood cells have these vitamin D receptors that are so important for immunity. So it makes sense there because this is vital for having all this DNA. You know, if you've got all this sort of useful DNA there that can promote immune responses and optimize metabolism and do other things like that, if you can't use it, um, if you haven't got the vitamin D receptors, the activated vitamin D receptors with the vitamin D to activate all these genes, then they're not much use. It's a bit like having money in your wallet, but you can't open your wallet. You know, the potential is there as humans. We just have to optimise it for, for our health. So they're all over the place. Approximately 3% of the human genome is under the control of this activated form of vitamin D. Quite amazing. 3% of the human genome needs vitamin D to work properly. So in us, we've probably got about 21,000 active genes. So we can see that a lot of them, 3% of those, uh, require vitamin D for their normal physiological activation. Why aren't the medical authorities getting this? It really is not too hard to understand. Vitamin D has been observed to contribute to the synthesis of defensins. These are small immune proteins. And to be pivotal in the enhancement of phagocytic activity. So the bacteria are gobbled up by phagocytic. Ph 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 phage means to eat. Cytic cells, eating cells, phagocytes, they'll eat up viruses and bacteria, which of course is a good idea if you want to get rid of them. Um, and to modulate the uh, immune system response by regulating the inflammatory cascade. So importantly, people with vitamin D are less likely to get this runaway inflammatory cytokine storm that of course kills so many people, uh, killed so many people in the pandemic and uh, kills a lot of people still from sepsis. Why wouldn't we want to mediate a pathological reaction to an infection because we haven't got the vitamin D to damp it down. Now, last picture I've got to show you here. This is a... Uh, Professor Anderson's actually just sent me this from Italy, Calcifidiol. This is the activated form of vitamin D. So when you take vitamin D as a tablet like you normally get from the supermarket, it takes a week or two to um, activate that into this active form. So if you've got someone who's acutely ill and give them vitamin D, they're not going to get an immediate benefit. But if you give them the activated form, which this is here, 
This is the Calcifi dial, the already activated form, ready available in Italy. Then that is there's pretty good reason to believe that has an immediate benefit, because this Calcifi dial works within um, a couple of hours. We got that information from Dr. Grimes just a week or two back. Works within a couple of hours, whereas the vitamin D you take by mouth takes a couple of weeks to work. So if someone's already topped up with vitamin D and they get an infection in the best position to combat that infection, but if someone gets an infection and their vitamin D is low, then you could top it up with this. And it works really quickly, within a couple hours. And that means that's working actually way quicker than antibiotics. So if someone's got a viral infection, the antibiotics aren't going to work, but the calcifidiol could probably help them. If someone's got a bacterial infection, they need the antibiotics, but why not optimise their immune system as well by making sure they're topped up with calcifidiol if their vitamin D levels are low. So in my view, everyone being admitted with an acute infection should have their vitamin D levels checked. And if their vitamin D levels are low, it should be considered to boost it with uh, calcifidiol. We really need studies on this, but of course, vitamin D and calcifidiol are not very expensive. Whereas new drugs from Big Pharma tend to be astronomically expensive. I'll leave you to make your own conclusions from what I've said there. Um, for now, uh, thank you for watching. And it feels good that we were vindicated that we thought this was the case way back in early 2020. And the research is supporting it. Vitamin D reduces the incidence of getting COVID in the first place, reduces the likelihood of going to intensive care. And if the studies were done, I suspect we'd find the same for a whole range of viruses and bacterial infection because we are optimising the immune system in terms of vitamin D physiology, which is essential for the activation of 3,000 genes. Over to the chief medical officers. I expect they'll watch this video and act on this within days or not, but you've watched it and thank you for watching.